Колеги, продовжуємо робочий день. Dear colleagues, we continue our work in the, in the press center of Ukrainian crisis media center, and currently we'll have statement on the open competition for the position of ombudsman. We have Alexandra Matvechuk, chairperson at the Center of Civil Liberties, Mr. Arkady Bushenko, executive director of the Ukrainian Helsinki, uh, Helsinki Group for Human Rights, Mm, Alexander Pavlichenko, Deputy Director at the Harker Human Rights Group, and Mr. Zarian Kiss, Manager on the Advocacy and Partnership Freedom House in Ukraine. Ms. Oksana Pokalchuk, Executive Director at Amnesty International in Ukraine, is joining us at this very moment. Mm. So, Ms. Alexandra, the floor is yours. Thank you for attending this press conference uh, of our platform, the uh, Human Rights Protection Agenda. This is a group of organizations uh, uh, dealing with human rights in Ukraine, challenges to human rights enjoyment in Ukraine. And uh, it, this press conference is devoted to the election of new ombudsman. On April 28th, the term of Miss uh, Valeria Lutkovska, who occupied position of the ombudsman for the last years, had expired, and now the parliament has to make its decision and appoint a new ombudsman for the next five years on behalf of the parliament to report to the parliament about human rights situation in Ukraine. The importance of this issue uh, for human, uh, human rights activists and uh, for the entire population of Ukraine is uh, of big importance, but as of now, we do not know uh, about the candidates, the nominees, and uh, we in general do not know whether there are any discussions around this issue in the parliament. Irrespectively who will become the ombudsman, the most important thing is independence of this person from any uh, political influences and uh, thus uh, uh, discussions about the nominees should be beyond the political sphere and uh, it is uh, very important uh, uh, to uh, protect the institute of ombudsman from political influences now we think it is uh, very important that uh, an ombudsman is uh, a, a person uh, taking a position uh, uh, from the human rights point of view and uh, staying, uh, staying aside of all the political uh, um, processes in Ukraine. So the objective of today's uh, a uh, press conference uh, is uh, to bring the process uh, of uh, ombudsman appointment into the uh, public light and uh, to start discussions of possible candidates. Good morning. Uh, I am the idea to offer uh, open uh, competition. Uh, for the uh, and selection procedure for uh, the appointment of bootsman uh, uh, um, is a result of all the uh, events uh, um, dealing with the appointments of previous ombudsman from uh, uh, during the last ten years. The um, law requires uh, that. Uh, uh, a nominee should be not less than 40 years of age. And I think that uh, this provision about minimal age of uh, an ombudsman is a clear 
illustration that uh, um, there was a political uh, so, so there were some political intentions behind uh, the law uh, on ombudsman which was passed uh, in uh, 1996 uh, uh, fulfilling its commitment to the council of europe uh, and uh, one of the commitments was about uh, e establishment of the ombudsman position at that very stage, uh, three bills uh, entered the parliament, and uh, one of them won. Uh, and in line with that law, um, uh, Ms. Karpachova was appointed. The second. Uh, The second bill was uh, submitted uh, uh, by uh, the lawyer who was the author of the bill, and uh, um, he was also the candidate. But uh, at that time, uh, he was 38 years old. Miss uh, Karpachova was a bit elder, but uh, uh, this brings us to the fact that the 40 years old minimal age was introduced to deprive that candidate from the lawful competition. And uh, um, uh, so this was the origin of this uh, provision, unfavorable provision. And each candidate uh, uh, which uh, uh, will be willing to become an ombudsman today will be asked the same question about the age. Uh, I think that there might be um, many good candidates who uh, who are worthy but they do not have this uh, age also there were other issues that were hampering to execute the mandate of the ombudsman uh, one of the examples of the year 2007, the elections of ombudsmen, the elections to the Parliament of Ukraine and the ombudsman of that time is number two in the party of regions list and gets to the Parliament, basically. It was impossible to say that she was politically unbiased. Then another example related to the current ombudsman, who is still the ombudsman till the day the new ombudsman takes the oath, Valeria Lutkovska. During the last three years, there was not a single report presented to the parliament because the parliament doesn't consider the issue on uh, hearing this report. And that's done on purpose. I cannot say that that helps or stimulates the work of the ombudsman. Maybe it's not so negative, but at the same time we can say that there were problems with the resource support when a new political uh, force uh, and newly elected president had their own attitude uh, to the ombudsman, to Valeria Lutkovska, who's been holding this position since 2012. So we suggested to organize an open competition so that uh, we can 
give uh, an assessment uh, or express our opinion on all the candidates. Thank you. That was Alexander Pavlichenko, Kharkiv Human Rights Group. Thank you, Alexander, for giving us examples on how the political factor was negatively affecting the institution of ombudsman. And that and Zarian Kis from Freedom House will tell us about the main principles. The Institute of Ombudsman is a key institution to guarantee the human rights for people in Ukraine. And it is important that the election appointment of the Ombudsman corresponds to the highest international standards the Paris Principles of uh, United Organization of the UN, according to which the procedure of appointing the Ombudsman is to be set up in accordance with the procedure which uh, uh, guarantees the um, representation of the civil society. We mean it's about uh, NGOs, trade unions, professional organizations of lawyers, of journalists, and so on. Also, there are recommendations of the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe, which refer to national institutions. I need to say that in different countries, these institutions are built differently. In some countries, these are commissions, which are uh, defending human rights in other countries. These are ombudsmen, and these structures have different forms in different countries, but the key principle of structuring them is independence and participation of civil society at all the stages of the process. Independ uh, in Ukrainian law also provides for independence of ombudsmen, the Ombudsman exercises activity independent of any authority, has to act independently and biased in the interest of the citizen and the um, citizen. And that is why Freedom House supports this initiative which is to organize an open competition for the position of ombudsman, especially because the Ukrainian civil society can suggest different candidates, and my colleagues will tell about them. And the main thing in holding the competition is uh, to ensure the participation of civil society at all the stages of the competition, at the stage of forming criteria, at the stage of developing procedures. In the competition commission, and we see also many candidates for this position in Ukrainian civil society. Thank you. Esteemed journalist, there's a press release and the statement which is there on the table that will be published on the websites of the participants of our uh, seminar. Arkady Bushenka, Ukrainian Helsinki Group for Human Rights, will tell us about how the competition will be organized. Thank you, Alexandra. To continue what my colleagues said, I can say that Ukrainian Helsinki Group and Kharkiv uh, uh, Human Rights Group uh, uh, have been insisting uh, for a long time that this process of election of uh, ombudsman uh, becomes uh, independent of political bargain. This is the position where we cannot use political bargain or the principle of quotas. 
because this position is uh, to be independent. We managed to minimize this political influence, but not completely uh, get rid of it. So thanks to the efforts of many organizations, we decided this time to suggest an open competition for the position of ombudsman. We believe that this procedure will give uh, objectiveness to assessments. We will see why this or that person is uh, suggested to be elected to the position of ombudsman. We will be able to provide arguments and then the elections will be transparent, objective, and uh, well substantiated. Now we cannot say why the MPs vote for this or that candidate, whether that's uh, the result of uh, the very good qualities of the candidate or the result of some political bargaining inside the parliament. By the way, I can say that Ukrainian Helsinki group has presented this idea at one of the meetings of the Committee on Human Rights of the Parliament, and we found the support of, and the committee is ready to cooperate. We cannot uh, deprive the Parliament of its prerogative to elect the Ombudsman. We want to limit the discretion of the parliament so that their choice is grounded choice. And we see that uh, in some actions of the speaker, if the speaker of the parliament who has the right, according to the law, to submit the candidate for the position of ombudsman, if he decides that he will submit the candidate only from the list provided by the selection committee or whatever we call the body which will be holding the open competition, then this will be this will somehow remove the danger of political uh, biasness and um, the participation of civil society will be obvious and influential. The civil society is interested in participating because ombudsman cannot exist without the civil society because for the civil society ombudsman is uh, uh, a certain uh, uh, mechanism of influencing the policy of the state. If the speaker makes a decision that he will submit the candidate only from the list submitted by the selection committee, then to my mind, this will be a very good decision. Then there's another way of uh, submitting the candidates. One third of the parliament can submit their candidates and we cannot uh, hamper that process. But we understand that there is such a risk because one political force will say that we are not interested in this competition. We will just submit our candidates, but this will be political responsibility of that political force. And the society will have the right to ask why are you offering, why uh, are you submitting the candidate who didn't want to participate in the open competition? And in this open address, we remind uh, 
uh, what uh, features we believe uh, are very important for the position of the candidate and we are uh, <coughs> developing the procedures and criteria to evaluate future candidates. They will be, we hope, quite objective. They will be perceived by the society as uh, objective assessment. Besides that, um, what I'm interested in is not just the past experience of, uh, and knowledge, but a certain uh, vision of the candidate on how this uh, ombudsman's institution should develop and how the national institutions on protection of human rights should develop. Because that is the program for the next five years. We have the institute which is developing, which has no, is not perfect. The first ombudsman, Karpachova, and the second one, Lutkovska, really were helping in developing of this institute. But uh, I'm interested in how it will be developing in the future. So the program, the vision of the candidate uh, will be very important to assess whether they are able to uh, hold this position. Our conclusions, I hope, will be accepted by the parliament. The uh, MPs who will be electing the Ombudsman will look at our opinion, at our conclusions, will look at the characteristics of this uh, candidate and uh, they will have a look at the opinion of the civil society about that candidate and then they will make a right choice. Then I would like to draw your attention to another attempt to make this process more political. One draft law provided uh, cancelling the norm on uh, secret voting. That's a guarantee that uh, the MP who votes for or against one candidate uh, is voting not because of the party discipline. If we cancel the secret voting, then and the leaders of the factions will agree on how to vote, will instruct on how to vote, and people will vote, and that's a big danger. And I hope that this draft law will not become a law, and I hope that our proposal will be perceived by the Speaker of the Parliament and Parliamentary Committee, by parliamentary factions and MPs, uh, as... Um, a um, wise uh, way out of the situation and wise guarantee of depolitizing this position. I believe that is uh, good for the image of our parliament, for the image of Ukraine, and this will make easier uh, the future of the ombudsman because uh, mm, no one will say that the person became ombudsman because of some political uh, agreements. Ombudsman. Thank you very much. The process of ombudsman selection is uh, observed by international organizations and I would like to give the floor to Oksana Pokalchuk, representing Amnesty International in Ukraine. Uh, good afternoon. Amnesty International supports this initiative of the Human Rights uh, Agenda uh, Union, and uh, we believe that the Ombudsman Institute has been developing in Ukraine rather rapidly. We are happy of this fact. Mm. But nevertheless, the current situation puts under doubt whether this success in this institutional development will continue, whether the uh, efficient Ombudsman institution will exist 
Further, for us, the most critical issue is that as a part of civil society, we have no influence and we cannot even assess the candidates. I think that in case the parliament or this speaker accept our suggestion, then in this case, everybody will win and uh, transparency and openness of the parliament uh, will be strengthened and uh, this will also raise trust to the personality and figure of an ombudsman because uh, in case uh, the candidate uh, uh, would be ruled uh, and uh, driven by party interests, uh, not by the human right uh, interests. This will um, make our life hard as uh, human rights activists, and uh, this will eliminate the entire effort in this uh, sphere. We believe that uh, we should act now to prevent any deterioration in uh, uh, the development of Ombudsman institution in Ukraine, and we encourage MPs to uh, join our suggestion about open competition. We hope that the voice of human rights activists and human rights community would be heard and that MPs will um, accept our uh, suggested uh, competition procedure. Now, Q&A session, please raise your hands and mention whom you wish to ask a question. I am Irina Shevchenko, uh, Union uh, correspondent. I have a question to Mr. Alexander. You mentioned that the provision about uh, 40 years of age should be removed because it creates obstacles for many decent candidates. Uh, uh, what do you think about other uh, uh, parts of the same provision about f five years residence in Ukraine? I uh, think that uh, the provision about uh, a candidate's age is a bit exaggerated because even the age uh, uh, limit for the pre uh, president candidate uh, are uh, smaller and uh, for other state positions. So I believe that we should uh, uh, pass the legislation, all pieces of legislation, not in course of elections uh, to prevent any ad hoc provisions, but uh, to pass legislation in more quiet periods. Uh, uh, of course, I support elimination or of this very provision because I think that uh, as of today it uh, plays not positive role. Um, I can represent my colleagues. Ms. Alexander is younger than 40 years of age. We can speak about some other candidates, about other criteria, about years of residence in Ukraine. This is a standard uh, requirement uh, which uh, uh, exists uh, uh, in the requirements to MPs, uh, to the judges, candidate judges, etc. Actually, the law should be just a formal filter which does not impose any um, specific uh, requirements, uh, not trying to underscore uh, the best or worst features of the can candidates. Now, a question to Mr. Arkady about the procedure of the open uh, uh, competition, uh, open selection. Maybe you have planned some interviews uh, or uh, something else. First of all, the selection uh, commission or committee or working group should, should be uh, established. 
and this uh, the parliamentary role to um, establish such a committee inside the ad hoc committee inside the parliament. Then we have uh, announced the open uh, uh, competition and invite candidates to apply for this position um, in order to ensure wide uh, participation we should publish the announcement as widely as possible this is just an example uh, of uh, the, the statement the, the announcement statement should be as broad as possible then uh, we may uh, plan for interviews in order to uh, understand the specific experience of each uh, candidate, understand their vision of the prospects, uh, the, uh, to assess the experience in human rights sphere in international organizations and in result of uh, this work the future commission selection commission would compile the list uh, short list of candidates Uh, accompany it with its own recommendations and uh, submit, uh, for example, three candidates uh, um, to the attention of plenary room. And uh, after that, uh, uh, the speaker either will um, put one or only one candidate or all the three candidates for voting in the parliament. Uh, as for the number of candidates for voting, we have no final decision, but uh, this is a brief description of what we would like to have as a process. Dear friends, uh, uh, we would like to here uh, uh, that top three, top five uh, people uh, who might uh, be become a candidate for the ombudsman in line with the requirements. I uh, would not uh, try to make assumptions now although I may can make guesses for myself uh, in order uh, not to be blamed in prejudice in favor of uh, any candidate. I do not wish to mention any names now because potentially we can uh, always hope for the better candidate than we can imagine. But uh, in the statement of our coalition, we mentioned uh, several names uh, to point out the uh, profile, uh, the scale of the profile of those people. This does not mean that those people uh, will wish to participate, but uh, these are candidates just uh, to demonstrate them as an example. We provided these names to prove that there is a good uh, choice, uh, a good range of possible choices and a good pool of candidates. Uh, uh, we will be eager to ha have Larisa Denisenko, uh, Zaharova, Valeria Lutkovska, Volodymyra Yavorska, and other people who comply with the criteria. 
good afternoon Andri Mihal. Mr. Arkady, I have a question to you quite often. Uh, in Ukraine, independence uh, is uh, merged and mixed with non uh, accountability. Uh, what are the objectives of the ombudsman whom he or she is accountable? Uh, I cannot agree with you um, about non-accountability, but as for the independence, uh, this should be a person able to make statements despite uh, um, his or uh, her beliefs uh, they, and uh, having enough uh, uh, strength and will uh, to counteract to the political pressures, uh, uh, believing that an ombudsman is a representative of uh, 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 the Ukrainian people. Uh, irrespectively of whether political forces or civil society um, try to make influence upon an ombudsman. In reality, the ombudsman is accountable to the parliament because this is a parliamentary institution. That's why I'm surprised with the fact that our parliament uh, um, remains indifferent to the wish of an ombudsman to present her report to the parliament for three years. Actually, she expresses its, her willingness to do this every year. Uh, 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 Valeria Lutkovska uh, each year submits its uh, report to the parliament, but the parliament uh, uh, shows no uh, wish to look at uh, it. Uh, as for the civil society, uh, we always can express our criticism to uh, current ombudsman, and uh, uh, we um, follow her work uh, very attentively. In my opinion, that uh, first ombudsman and uh, the second ombudsman uh, received some uh, unpleasant reprimand on behind, behalf of the civil society. Um, no, for us, it's important to preserve us our ability to make uh, impact on the uh, ombudsman's work. In general, I feel that we can ensure accountability of an, uh, of an ombudsman, although we have uh, 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 some uh, influence at the international era, and we can influence the ombudsman why international institutions, our uh, Ukrainian ombudsman office has uh, possess an A status in the international ombudsman organization and uh, uh, any non-compliance with the civil society requirements may result in uh, um, uh, dropping in this rating. The coalition work of uh, uh, civil society organizations resulted in uh, creation of the special working group when Ms. Lutkovska was elected. We created uh, a working group which uh, uh, established monitoring over her work uh, and uh, 
we um, prepared the top priorities list monitored uh, implementation of those top priorities um, organized joint sessions with the secretariat then we updated that list of priorities and in general we worked very closely and uh, finally we produced the coalitional uh, report of human rights uh, organizations and th that report presented our vision of the situation with human rights in Ukraine thank you I'd like to thank all our speakers. I hope that uh, people will listen to your advice. The candidates will be very good uh, and uh, the selection will be the best out of the best. And uh, I invite you to come back where to inform us about new ombudsman. If you have any questions, please ask them individually. Thank you.